Hi, my name is Emma Vogel. I research animal movement and animal behavior at the University of Tromsø, the Arctic University of Norway. And um, for this video, I'll be presenting my virtual poster on herring biomass and how it influences killer whale movements. Um, for this research, I worked in collaboration with the Institute of Marine Research in Norway. So for a bit of background um, on this research, so there's a lot of known about Norwegian killer whales behavior when they're in the fjords. Um, when they're in the fjords, they're in sheltered areas, so they're just generally easier to access. They're predictably there in the winter when the herring is also there. And they are easy to be observed because there's just closer to more coastal communities, there are more people to observe them, and it's, it's nicer conditions for research. So not much is known about their behavior after leaving the fjords and when they move to offshore waters. Um, so what we wanted to, what we set out to try to figure out is how their behavior, um, does their behavior continue to be influenced by herring after leaving the fjords? So to do this, we deployed satellite telemetry tags on killer whales on the center of their dorsal fins. And these tags work by um, connecting with um, overhead li within line of sight satellites and are able to use this data to triangulate the location where they likely were. And with these locations and timestamps, we're able to model the most probable path that these whales may have taken in this time period, which is what's depicted in the map in the center panel. Um, so with that, we're able to get this idea of where the whales are. Um, but we wanted to talk about the behavior of the whales and how it's influenced by the herring. So to get the idea of the herring distribution on the coast during this time period, we utilized the Institute of Marine Research's annual herring surveys where they collect acoustic and biological data. And this acoustic and biological data, um, we then were able to interpolate it across the larger um, geographical range using integrated and nested Laplace approximations. And that's what's seen in this map above, where you see the red areas that represent higher herring biomass and the blues represent lower herring biomass. So with that information, we were able to track the um, and plot the whale tracks over the herring biomass. And you can see the way that the whales are moving across this field um, and how they're using it, but we can't really talk about behavior without having a way to quantify it. All we can talk about here is just locations and relocations. So the way that we, the method we used to quantify behavior was move persistence. And move persistence gives us a behavioral index um, ranging between zero and one, where one is indicated by the lighter greens and zero is indicated by the darker blues and purples. And one represents the directed transiting behavior, which is characterized by direct um, persistent locations and high speeds, whereas the blues represent more consistent turning and reduced speeds. So we can see in this last map, there appears to be a patterns where there is higher concentrations of the darker blue points in areas where there's the higher herring biomass. And in areas of lower herring biomass, we see these formations of almost transiting corridors connecting the two areas of higher herring biomass between them. So they're, so they're exhibiting restricted foraging behavior in areas of high herring biomass, transiting quickly and directedly to the next area of higher herring biomass. So with that, we found that killer whales consistently switched from transiting behaviors to foraging behaviors in areas where there's higher herring biomass. And with that, we were able to conclude that herring constitutes an important prey resource for Norwegian killer whales, not only when they're in the fjords in the winter, but also after they leave the fjords um, and when they move to offshore waters on the Norwegian shelf during the herring spawning period in the spring. And yeah, that's my poster. I thank you for listening and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or want, want any further information. And I also like to thank the, um, the, the, every, the folks that organized this conference. It's really exciting to be a part of it and present my first virtual poster. So thank you again, and looking forward to hearing, have questions and feedback. Thank you so much.